A few days ago, I saw a code snippet that immediately stressed me out, like badly. That code snippet is this. I cannot put into words how much this stresses me out. What happens if an additional condition gets added on either side of this else? How do you know you're hitting the right else here? The answer is you don't. It is basically impossible to guarantee that when this code is changed, it's not gonna break or hit a weird else case that is nearly impossible to debug. I was very stressed when I saw this. It made me realize I need to talk a bit about conditions, as simple as they may be, because goddamn, have I seen if and if else statements used in some really terrible ways. I did see one other tweet though that inspired me to go a little further and make this video. This one came from Primogen. Thankfully, it's one of those rare cases where Prime and I agree really strongly. It's not quite as much about if statements as it is about implicit returns, but it still showcases how confusing these things can get if you don't do them a little more strictly. The first example here is using an if else with an implicit return. I want to be very clear here. I hate this code. To me, it is incredibly unclear that none is being returned in this condition and that this if else, whatever comes back from this, whatever the final line is in any of these conditions, that's what's being returned. The other thing that's confusing to me here is if I was to add another line at the bottom here, these are just random things being set in lines. They're no longer return values. The idea of a return being inherent to a line of code being the last line in a function, so just I love functional programming, it's rough. The counter example Prime gives here that I fully agree with him on is this guy. Might be more characters, but I don't care because this code reads like English. If line starts with bracket, return some, else return none. Doesn't even need to say else because it's if this is true, we do this thing. Otherwise we do this other thing because we escaped early. I love early escapes. I love this code. The difference here is so stark that I feel like I could explain this code to my mother who obviously isn't a programmer, maybe not that obvious, regardless, my mom doesn't code and I could describe this to her and what it's doing. I might be able to describe part of this with her, but I sincerely doubt she would understand. And I personally like code that's simple enough, they don't even need to know the language to read it and to understand what it does. And things like early returns, things like explicit conditions, explicit returns, these behaviors, they make it way easier to parse code. And importantly, they make it way less likely that a mistake breaks the code in the future. What I see when I see this code, this if else, or when you see this code with these awful brackets, what I'm seeing when I look at these is something very fragile that is just waiting to break in a future code change in that code base. I'm not looking at stable code. Obviously this worked, otherwise it wouldn't have shipped, but now no one's ever gonna want to change this. That's just reality. And I saw somebody say, well, if you had color highlighting for your brackets, this wouldn't be a problem. Show me a working Chrome extension to make that work in GitHub so that when I'm doing a code review, it's clear to me where this nested else is actually closing. This isn't just about your editor. This is certainly not just about your solo projects. This is about how these things affect software shipping at scale. And I promise you, when you have this level of nesting, you're going to have problems. As soon as this code changes, it is now a liability. Earlier in stream, I was linked from Twins, a really cool blog post from Google where they talk about else nuances. And it turns out Google, similar to me, doesn't like else statements that much. They like them a little bit more than me, but they still push back on it a lot of the time. And they certainly don't love this nested stuff. This blog post is based on a problem that Google would put in their bathrooms as a testing on the toilet episode. Yes, if you work at Google, they give you leap code problems in the bathroom. But on the bright side, this is a good lesson for us to learn. So even though we're not shitting at the Google office, we can still learn a little bit here, right? So let's do it. Consider the following guidelines to help you structure your functions. Use a guard clause to handle specific cases upfront so the rest of the code can focus on the core logic. I love this. Parse path. If not path raise else nested logic, this is disgusting. Please don't do this. Your code, the majority of your code should not be baked deeply in an else. Do an early escape and let the rest of the valid code just be the body of that function. I love early returns. If you have cases you want to get out from quickly, front load those, put them right at the top. Say, if these things are true, get me out. And then the rest of the function can be whatever it's supposed to do. It's way more readable. It's way more maintainable. And the control flow of your application is exponentially clearer. And also people are saying in chat, it is faster to do this as well. If you can early return, you probably should. I also think once your if statements get complex enough, you should probably break them out into a function where you early return aggressively. So you don't have to worry about these weird complex statements. And instead it's contained within a function 
function that is clear about what its expected inputs and outputs are. That all said, Google leans towards using else for contained core responsibility logic. So for the favicon example, they don't use if returns, they use if else returns. So if the user ID is none, return signed out. If they're incognito, return incognito. If there's no inbox items, return empty. Otherwise, return the has items icon. I think this is fine. I would not reject this in code review. Personally, I would just do if thing return, if thing return, similar to this code. I don't think it's that big of a deal. That said, I get their argument. Since all of this is the core responsibility, containing that in a series of checks that are one block instead of it technically being multiple paths is nice. All of that said, what I'm seeing here is an opportunity for some pattern matching that wasn't taken, but not enough languages have pattern matching, so I understand. They also say to use a switch statement instead of an if else, but nah, just use if else. Especially in JavaScript, switch statements are a little bit weird. I did see in chat someone linked a Dan Abramov thing about if statements that I would love to see. I've not seen this principle widely articulated, but I use it all the time. Basically, the idea is when you write if statements, it's good to make sure the code still makes sense if each of them is deleted independently or if more similar ones are copy pasted. Ooh, I like that rule. If statements should be treated as individual blocks that you can pull in, delete, override, or do whatever you want to. If demo, path name plus equals demo, let's search. If file, search plus equals this. I want to say there's a reply to. Ah, this is three different examples. Extra is the content. If demo and file, return demo file and extra. Ugh, that is hard to read. That is somehow worse. And that is somehow even worse. Impressive. And this is the same code that Dan replied with. This is way more readable. Yeah, this is great. I see Dan's point. As per usual, when Dan is talking about how code should be simpler, we fully agree. I'm pretty sure what this is going to be a link to is, yeah, URL search params. For things like this, you should be encoding it using the URL search params helper, so you don't actually have to do all of this string appending shit yourself. But assuming you can't do that because you're using something that's not standard web technologies, I much prefer this. And I'm a person who hates mutation. I don't like the idea of having a let and mutating it. But when the result is code that's this much more readable than whatever these are, as much as I love that this is an immutable solution, it's painful. I don't find this readable at all, especially this ternary one. This, you're not convincing me anyone on the team actually understands how this works. That's not, you're not convincing me that. You might have understood it when you wrote it, but when this breaks from a weird edge case two weeks later, you're not patching this properly the first try. You're spending 20 minutes trying to figure out what it's doing, another 20 minutes rewriting it, and then 10 minutes regretting your decision to be an engineer and moving out to the farms like we all plan to in the end. So yeah, those are my thoughts. Early returns are great. Use them when you can. As much as I hate mutating things, if it makes your code more readable and maintainable, I recommend doing it. But most importantly, don't do those giant chaotic if else checks because debugging those becomes nightmarish really fast. Don't be scared of breaking out functions. Definitely don't be scared of early returns. And maybe you can make your code a little bit simpler and easier to work with. If you want to see more ways that people use JavaScript and TypeScript wrong, I'll pin a video in the corner all about how people love to use objects incorrectly. Because once again, sadly, people use the tools they're given. It doesn't mean they use them well. Good to see you guys as always. I'll see you in the next one. Peace, nerds.